Welcome back everybody, I have another video for you and if you are working on your kitchen design and your remodel, it is so important to understand what style of cabinetry you want for your new kitchen. And I realized I never even talked about the three main different types of cabinets that you can choose from. And today I will get into that and give you a little bit of input and tips and tricks to watch out for when designing with these three different cabinet styles. So uh, stay tuned for all that information. It's gonna be super important for you to figure out which cabinet to buy and figure out your overall budget. And if you have not subscribed yet, you better do so. Hit the little bell button to get notified whenever we release a new video. And if you're in designing kitchens, remodeling kitchens, you're working on your own project, this is definitely the channel to be because I do nothing but talk about kitchens, okay? So without further ado, guys, my name is Kasten Kopp, kitchen designer and owner of King's Kitchen here located in Tacoma, Washington, and we are adding more and more virtual services for you guys, so if you are located somewhere else, please make sure to go on our website and check out how we could potentially help you even from afar. And now really though, like without further ado, let's get started. All right, so in the world of cabinetry, we have three main different types of box constructions that you can choose from. And this has nothing to do with the finish. Oh, I want a white shaker or I want a really beautiful walnut. Has nothing to do with that. This is the basic construction differences of buying your cabinet boxes, right? And we have three different ones. The first one is um, the kind of traditional American made um, way of constructing a cabinet and it is called a face framed cabinet or a framed cabinet box construction and as you can see in some of the video clips and the pictures that we're adding the main kind of reason why it's called that way is because the box is built and then there is a three quarter inch face frame around the front of the opening on your bases, on your drawers, on your wall cabinets. And that basically holds the entire box in place. And typically it's a three quarter inch thick real wood front face frame that gets wrapped around the opening. Next on the list, number two, we have inset cabinetry. And not a lot of people actually know about inset because it's not offered everywhere, but it's a really cool kind of traditional American way of building cabinets. And the real interesting thing about face frame is that instead of the door laying on top of that face frame, the doors and your drawers are actually flush inset in that face frame. So you have the same thing, you have that face frame around your openings, but you have a flush drawer and flush door. And I see more and more designers getting into this style. It's making a really cool comeback. They typically still use it a lot more in the Southern states. And it's, I think it's like a very charming look. It can be very, very cool, but there are some tweaks you need to know about designing with inside cabinets. And then third on the list is my typical favorite, my uh, frameless cabinet box construction or also called Euro box construction. Now, the European way of building a cabinet box, and you know, guys, I'm from Germany, like I like to use the word efficient in just the same way when, you know, Germans build their boxes, we love to be efficient, right? So the box itself is built in a more sturdier way, so you don't need that front face frame to hold it in square. Okay, and so we eliminate that front face frame altogether, and now all of a sudden, I'm gaining more access. Actually, another um, nickname for frameless cabinetry is full access cabinetry, and this is why. Without that front face frame overlapping into my box, I now have full access to the entire width of my um, cabinet. And the biggest difference this change makes is when you're comparing drawer boxes. If I'm comparing a framed drawer box of uh, 15 inches wide, my drawer is typically like, you know, way less than 15 inches in width. But if I'm comboxing a 15 inch drawer base in frameless, my drawer is wider. So if you have the same space in kitchen, you know, using frameless cabinetry will get you more storage space. And to me, I don't even know why some people are still 
purchasing frame cabinetry. I think sometimes it's because we're trying to maybe save a little bit on the budget and go more of like a builder grade cabinet box. But then again, like, you know, guys, I love Belmont and Belmont released a really cool frameless builder grade line, the 1300 line. If you don't know about it, check it out below. It's amazing. I actually have it in my house because I installed this kitchen back at high time of COVID and I really needed a fast lead time. That was the main reason. Otherwise I would have loved to done the Matisse because I love the Matisse door in the 1600 line. But I ended up with the APAC store and it is stunning and I get nothing but compliments for it. So, okay, back, I'm swerving off here. So those are the three main different construction boxes. And I just want to give you a couple of little hints to remember you know, when you're designing with some of these different cabinet box construction in the next chapter right now. All right, so you are working on your cabinets, you're figuring out the different kind of box constructions, what's the cabinet style that you're trying to go with. Again, this has nothing to do with the door style, nothing to do with the finish. We're talking about the box itself, right? And let's say you're going framed because forever, what reason you found a supplier and they supply frame cabinetry. Okay, when you're working with frame cabinets, um, there's a couple of terms that will come towards you that you're like, oh, I don't even know what that means, right? So, and one is um, you have a half overlay door and you have a full overlay door. And this basically means if you have that face frame, you know, we're trying to add some pictures, that face frame around your box, and then the door lays in front of that box, the overlay amount tells you how much or little is that door going to cover that face frame. If the door is covering the face frame less, you have bigger gapping in between your doors and drawer fronts. If the door is a, for example, full overlay and it is overlaying that face frame more, now your gaps in between doors and drawer fronts become more narrow. So typically, if you go into homes right now, and a lot of those older homes were ripping out old kitchens, a lot of times you have kitchens with no hardware and people are just grabbing doors like that. You know, there's no hardware needed. It's because there's so much gapping in between the doors because it's probably an old version of a framed door. Um, that's what you see then. You don't need no hardware, right? So we're typically taking that out. Um, so just keep that in mind, full overlay, half overlay, that kind of determines when it's all set in place, how big or little your gap is just going to be between those doors. Otherwise, in the framed cabinet world, if you're working with um, any kind of end panels, a lot of times we sit them flush with the box itself. Okay, so we sit them flush with the box. We're not worried too much if we have fillers, we just have a single three quarter inch thick filler and that sits with the box flush itself because you're already having these gaps in between the doors. Designers are not worried about having gaps going into like filler material and things like that. So typically a framed cabinet, you know, when frameless first came out, framed used to be a lot more um, affordable than frameless, but I feel like that changed over the last couple of years. Um, but typically you can get away with like a little bit of less trim and things like that in the framed world. Another big thing to remember in the framed cabinet world, if you have a base cabinet or a wall cabinet, that face frame overlaps each end of your box by a quarter inch. And the size of the base cabinet or the wall cabinet, the overall width, let's say you have a base 24, that face frame that is the 24 inches of width and then it dips back a quarter inch left and right and then you have your box. And typically those ends are not finished. So you have, um, in most cases, if you're trying to do a finished end with a base, you know, a wall cabinet or whatever, in the framed world, you're adding a quarter inch end panel and that sits right in that little gap, okay? But then you have a little fine line there. So those are things to remember, okay? Uh, next, let's talk about inset cabinetry and how to design correctly with inset because you know you can do a lot of mistakes if you don't know what you're doing and you're designing with inset and it's not correct so on inset cabinetry every manufacturer is a little bit different but let's say if we have a standard of one and a half inches of face frame going around and then you have your drawer set inside of that face frame right 
you want that continued panel look of 1.5 inches throughout the kitchen and that this is because i'm sitting you know multiple cabinets next to each other so there's a face from here there's a face from here sit it together it's got like 1.5 inches so in the inset cabinet world your manufacturers are going to offer you several different versions of how to do a finished end and you're, you should really talk to your designer if your designer is not talking to you about this or like specifying certain widths of your project um either they're talking you know they're, they're just figuring it all out for you and they're really really good and they're not telling you but i feel like that should be discussed you know i mean it's obviously your kitchen and everybody thinks about things differently and there's no universal standards so because there's no universal standard you know how can i just decide on certain things without talking to you right so there are ways to flush the boxes without adding end panels but then do you want those panels to go all the way down because what you don't want to do is add another panel and now you have really really wide chunks of face frame okay i really hope this makes sense to you guys um i did a kitchen a little while ago and it's probably one of my favorite projects and the client came to me and was i want inset i've seen it online i want inset i love the inset look and those are the conversations that we had about those end panels and we're just going to keep running them down within that box frame so if i had let's say a 36 inch pantry instead of adding another end panel because i love the panel look hitting the floor instead of adding another three quarter or 1.5 inches of end panel i talked to my manufacturer and it was included in the 36 inches and it just continued on the bottom down so those are some really really yeah important things when you're working with inset um also any kind of fillers in the inset world because it's also flush i highly recommend to get extended fillers on your box and it might cost you a little bit more but it's going to look so much better rather than sitting individual fillers in gaps between walls because you'll get those fine lines and again remembering how much face frame am i exposing how big do i want my filler to be because i don't want huge chunks of face frame okay um, so that's really important to think about when you're working with inset cabinetry and another thing to remember is that inset cabinetry does not come cheap so it's not a builder grade line it's definitely a more higher end product and you really have so many details that you look out for and um the right kind of moldings you want to work in and filler material you want to work in in this line so inset cabinet styles are definitely more high-end and because you need a really good manufacturer as well that gives you a good warranty on this product because your doors and drawer fronts are flush in the box everything needs to line up just perfect for you know your items to shut smoothly and fall within that perfectly aligned opening right so i really recommend working with a great cabinet line on inset uh project i um have one cabinet line that i work with called devils and they are locally manufactured in vancouver washington and i'm working on several inset projects right now and that's definitely my go-to line for any kind of inset cabinetry okay next on the list my absolute favorite style of cabinets is eurobox aka frameless um, aka full axis cabinet box constructions again we're not talking about the door styles shaker flat whatever you want to do this is the box and the box and frameless is as efficient and easy as it can be because it's literally a box with three sides sometimes a top and of course a bottom right but there is no front face frame so if my box is 24 inches i'm only you um sorry i'm only losing those left and right panels that's it there's no face frame dipping in my drawer boxes are as wide as they can be and i love it now remember how i talked about full overlay and half overlay doors in the frame cabinet world in frameless you have there is not even that word because all doors are extremely full overlaid okay so in a frameless kitchen if you look in a frameless kitchen and you look at all of your doors next to each other and your drawer fronts next to each other you have very 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 little gapping you absolutely need to have hardware working with frameless by the way you also absolutely need hardware working with inset but you absolutely need hardware and that's the whole look 
you know, in Europe, people like to be efficient. We want things to look really good. We, you know, we like a little bit more modern styles, but you can totally do more traditional styles with uh, frameless cabinets. But everything is super tight and aligned. So typically, you only show 1 16th on each side of gapage. And then when you sit two boxes next to each other, you have 1 8th of an inch of gapage. 1 8th of an inch between a door and a drawer. So it's very, very tight. And typically, in frameless cabinets, you have very high quality hinges and drawer guides that can be fully adjusted. Okay, and I will talk about something else here in just a second. That will be fully adjusted um, so it all aligns perfectly and you have really nice, crisp lines, okay? A couple very, very important things when designing with frameless cabinets. Really like a basic standard to run panels deeper so the front of the panel sits flush with your door not with the box. There's about a three quarter inch difference, sometimes seven eighths. And what you don't want to do is create gappings within. You know, if I'm going like this and then I have a little gap for a panel and keep going, there's my door and then I have another gap for a filler. You want a complete smooth surface. And I see a lot of people designing frameless wrong and it's just really annoying. And sometimes people don't notice, but like technically to be correct, like the way you're designing in frameless is to have full depth panels that line up with your doors. If you're doing any kind of filler materials, which you're typically doing against walls, it's a back filler that's flush with your box construction. And then you have a front face filler that is the same depth as your door. So you're not creating again, these gapages, right? It's all about being crisp and smooth and tight and nice okay so frameless and we really want to pay attention to that and then when it comes to your um light balance um that's another thing in frameless you're usually doing a modification to raise the bottom of your box because there is not a lip underneath those lips are only in the framed cabinet world where you have a little bit of a lip underneath your wall cabinet like right you know underneath this thing um so if you want light balances for under cabinet lighting in the frameless world, you have to do a modification and then add a little bit of trim around the bottom. So don't forget that. Please talk to your designer while you're working through the kitchen that you're wanting to do a light balance, okay? In general, when frameless was first introduced in the US market, it was definitely a little bit more pricey. But these days, prices like from framed and frameless have really kind of like honed in with each other because there are so many American manufacturers now that make frameless cabinets. And you guys know who is America's biggest in-house frameless maker, my favorite, Belmont Cabinets. And I'll definitely, you know, post a link below. Now, these guys are not paying me, just FYI, for me to like cheer them on on YouTube all the time. I just love working with them. And because I do so many projects and I love frameless being, you know, born and raised in Germany, I just love working with their product. It's the easiest way to work with a product and it's amazing quality. I don't have ever no issues with Belmont. You know, and if there ever is a warranty claim, it's so easy to work with them. So that's why I recommend them. I definitely don't get no kind of sponsorships from these folks, but maybe I should like bring that up. I'm gonna call my, I'm gonna call my rep here pretty soon. But anyhow, um, so price wise, frameless, framed can really be the same. It's up to you on the final finishes you're choosing for your project. Okay, I think I rambled through this topic pretty quick and I really, really hope you guys understood all the stuff I was talking about and I'm hoping that Courtney, you know, all the pictures that she's adding to this video and little video clips are helping you to understand. If there are any more questions or anything you need a little bit more, you know, detail on, make sure to drop your comment below. I always get back to you guys myself and I'm happy to answer any kind of questions. And I hope this helped you to just get like a universal first idea of like, oh my God, what kind of cabinet do I even want before you go out and price everything out? Because what I don't want to happen for you, pricing out cabinets is extremely detailed. And first of all, it's a lot of work for designers to price out cabinet projects. And secondly, you have to really understand what you're quoting to compare your quotes. So if you're going out to one person and you're pricing out frameless, let's just say a painted shaker frameless, and then you're pricing out a painted inset shaker, 
and you're not understanding the differences, the inset is going to be more expensive, right? Versus if you would have like, you know, looked at that or got more information on the front end, now you can compare apples to apples, okay? So I think that's the biggest challenge in the cabinet world that most people don't compare apples to apples. Uh, so be fully transparent how much you know with your designer, walk through everything, ask them as many questions as you can think of. And if you have any more questions about the three different box constructions of the cabinet world, make sure to leave that comment below and I'll get back to you directly. Otherwise, make sure to check out our TikTok because Dave, one of our designers, is taking over TikTok by storm. And it's so much fun to watch him. We just had a TikTok go viral and it was really fun and it just makes his day, okay? Because he loves to go to his grandchildren and tell them like, by the way, I'm like a TikTok star. So it's hilarious. So make sure Courtney's gonna drop the handle for our TikTok here and then follow us on TikTok. And if you can think of any other topics that you would like to get more information about working on your kitchen design or remodel, please leave those in the comments below as well. I'm always looking for new topics to discuss with you guys. Otherwise, I think that's it. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next week.